Good morning. It is the last Monday in September and it is great to see you this morning. It's a little chilly and I couldn't be happier. I love chilly mornings. I love waking up and having a cup of coffee on my front porch with a hoodie or a sweatshirt on and enjoying a little cool air. So I hope that you are enjoying this time of year too. I know many people, some who live in this house with me, do not. They hate to see the end of the summer. And there's a lot to be said about that too. But as it is, life has seasons and we are turning into a new one. And I hope it is a good one for you. My name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Christian Churches in Iliopolis and Niantic, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries, which helps those who don't have um, a church home or those who are spiritual but not religious with their spiritual practices. And I'm the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. And I'm really gra gracious. I'm really grateful. I do speak for a living, by the way. I'm so grateful that you're taking time to spend with me this morning, as you do on Monday mornings. Those of you who take that time, I appreciate you so much, and I would love your feedback. Send me a message. Let me know what you want to hear more of, what you want to hear less of. I would love this to be meaningful for you, so let me know what you want or what you need. Today, I want to talk about contentment. That is, um, what does that even mean? There are a lot of different ways that we can be content in life. We can be content in a moment, like this morning when I sit on my porch with my coffee and pull the, cut the uh, my hoodie or my sweater a little tighter around me. There are a lot of different ways that we can experience contentment. It can be in the moment. It can be in life in general, or it can be an ongoing process that we work on. So however that's defined for you, I want to talk a little bit today about how tending to our spiritual and emotional health will help us to be content and find contentment. So I want to start with a question. If somebody asked you if you are healthy, where do your thoughts go to to answer this question? For most of us, I would imagine that if someone asked us if we are healthy, it would go to our physical well-being. Are you we eating nutritiously? Do you eat the right foods? Do you exercise regularly? Could you be doing a better job with not watching as much TV or sitting as much? Could you be a little more active? You know, those are common questions. And yet that is only part of the picture when it comes to your overall health. Many of us don't spend a lot of time or give a lot of thought to our spiritual and emotional health. And those are profoundly important. This pertains to the ability to recognize and manage our emotions, both the, the negative and the positive ones. And people with good emotional health have developed strategies to deal with their daily emotions and even those big ones that come from the big or traumatic events in our lives. So a healthy emotional life and physical life go hand in hand with growing your spiritual life as well. If you know me at all, you know that whether you are religious or not, I always encourage spiritual health because it is the nexus of our well-being. It's the nexus of our, our mental, emotional, and physical health, and it's the expression of our being. It holds a purpose in our life and our core values. Maintaining a healthy spiritual life is vital, vital, and often overlooked. It's an aspect of our overall health and well-being that's often overlooked, but it is so vital. Spiritual practices anchor all the other initiatives that we do in life to ensure good health. If you are spending a lot of time working out and eating well and you're neglecting your spiritual health, then you're really minimizing your results. Spiritual health just multiplies health in all other aspects of our life. Again, it's the nexus that holds it all together for us. The spirit lives in every cell of our being. So tend to those spiritual practices too. 
It undergirds and supports all other aspects of our health. So let's talk about emotional health for a little bit. And emotional health and spiritual health are partners. They go hand in hand. One presupposes the other. So what is emotional health and why is it important? Well, those with good emotional health share some core characteristics. Some of those are the following. One, people with strong emotional health have good coping skills and use various techniques to cope with those emotions. And those may include meditation or, again, those spiritual practices, or spending time with friends, or the capacity to accept that there are some things in life that are out of our control or beyond our control. An emotionally healthy person is able to handle new and even the big, heavy, and negative emotions. They will be able to understand their feelings and adapt to them. They will have resilience despite being so uncomfortable and overwhelmed. They will also be able to manage their stress positively. Number three, People that are emotionally healthy have good coping mechanisms for stress that may include the obvious, eating well, getting enough sleep, exercise, and therapy if necessary, but also may look like using your personal time off at work or volunteering for a cause that brings you joy and the important spiritual practice of exercising forgiveness. I am very tempted here to go off on a tangent, you know how passionate I am about the importance of the spiritual skill of giving and receiving forgiveness. But I'm going to use a little self-control today and not do that. But if you're interested, I will link you to several other places where I have talked about this very important skill. Number four in the emotionally healthy people and the characteristics that they have in common is they're able to respond in healthy ways to criticism and feedback. Those who manage their emotions well have healthy emotional responses. They are able to thrive and be successful because it increases their self-awareness. They have greater resiliency, more self-control, and feeling in control positively impacts our self-confidence and overall feelings of well-being. Emotional health is so important because it affects every aspect of our lives. Learning how to properly manage our emotions and reactions tremendously impacts the interactions that we have with people. So every single one of our relationships in our life is impacted by our emotional health. Just stop and think for a minute about how many relationships you have. You have the core ones with your family, the people you live with. You have relationships at work. You have relationships with your friends. All of these things are impacted by your emotional health. So multiply that out by the quality of your emotional health. And this varies in life. You can be a person that has tremendous emotional health and go through a period where where you're struggling a bit. That is very natural. Everyone has those peaks and valleys. So it's not a, yes, I'm emotionally healthy or no, I'm not. I mean, to a degree it is, but there are variances in there and even very emotionally healthy people go through periods where that emotional health is challenged a bit. So keep that in mind. And Again, the emotionally healthy people can take criticism, they respond well, they have great resilience, and all of those things affect the way that we read and interpret others in our relationships and in all of our interactions. So how do you know if you are emotionally healthy? Well, that's an important aspect of this. Ultimately, and unfortunately, most people do not realize that they might be struggling with this until it's already happening. And there are a few warning signs which could indicate unhealthy emotional maintenance in your life. So here are some symptoms to be on the lookout for. These are red flags that you may be struggling a little bit from poor emotional health or a period of poor emotional health in your life. So one is feeling anxious or irritated frequently. 
a noticeable increase in conflicts with those around you, a regularly feeling drained or burned out, low energy. Be on the lookout for this one, especially as we go into the winter months. If you live in a climate as I do, where we experience winter and it's dark and it's cold for a long time, a prolonged long time, this can really be impacted. So be on the lookout for that. Eating too much or not enough. Sleeping too much or not enough. If you're feeling depressed or your self-esteem or confidence has taken a dip. Decreased work performance can be a red flag as well. A lower standards of health and hygiene. If you are having different patterns of how you clean and maintain your body and groom yourself or patterns in your workout routine or the other things that you do, this can be an important red flag. Isolating from friends and family, again, as we go into the winter months, something to really keep an eye on. An increase in substance abuse. If you're drinking more than you usually do, or if you're drinking and you usually don't, or substance abuse in other ways, if you're eating more edibles than you usually do, any of those things, that can be a red flag that your emotional health needs tending to. Something is going on inside you that needs some attention. Even physical manifestations like higher blood pressure or some heart palpitations, our health physically, emotionally, and spiritually is all intertwined, interconnected. So dips in one area is definitely going to have effects and impacts in the other areas. So look for those physical symptoms as well. If you're experiencing back pain or neck pain, these can be symptoms of a physical problem, but they can also indicate that there's some emotional stress going on as well. So how can you improve and maintain your good health? There are a lot of ways to do that. And over on the spiritual health blog, I have a list of those. So I'm gonna link to that in the comments. So after this is finished, if you're watching it live, uh, give me a moment and in the comments, I'm going to put a link to that so you can check it out. Or if you're catching this in your newsfeed, make sure to hop over to the Spiritual Health blog. There are a lot of great resources there, but also there will be tips on how you can improve your emotional health. So I hope this was beneficial to you today. You deserve to have a happy, joyful, and content life. If you're not, there are steps you can take to have that. I want you to have that. And if there's any way I can be helpful to you in achieving that or maintaining that, please let me know. Send me a message uh, through Messenger or, or however. Send me a message. Let me know what you need. I would love to support you in those efforts. So that's what I have for you today, friends. I hope that you have had a... Oh, get this out of the way here. I hope you have had a fantastic week and I hope the week ahead of you is filled with blessings and joy. So that's it for today. I'll talk to you again next week. Bye for now.